rocking the MSR Denali Ascent snowshoes. I've had these for a number of years. Oh, that snow is falling. Think about that, dog. You like it? Time for a fire, huh? Let's see if we can find a good candidate for chopping. Snow's continuing to fall, and I don't have a lot of daylight to get everything done I want done today. Dude, if my bindings didn't just break right then, I'm very impressed because I pulled that thing hard. Full force. Still holding together. Use these snowshoes pretty good. Croc and I have basically the same snowshoes. MSR Classics. Wow. Man. The wind is like nothing right now, too. In the butt with, uh, I don't know, five feet of powder around. All right, check your fall line, bro. Dude, this powder is deep. This is when snowshoeing is really fun in this powder. Yeah, it is. It's nice. It rocks. Again, there's another Christmas card shot. It's a mountain lake off in the distance. Awesome. Finally, a snowshoe review here in the Nut and Fancy Project, or TMP, as we like to call it. Thanks for your patience. It's taken me a long time to get around to this review. A lot going on, lots of adventures, lots of gear being funneled through TMP. You guys all know that. If you've just found this review from Google, welcome. This is Nut and Fancy talking about one of my favorite pair of snowshoes. It's been in my possession since 2004. It is the MSR. Denali Ascent model of snowshoes. I have I have actually two pair of them, which I found pretty much necessary because lots of times the, the dude I'm going out hiking with or in the snow does not have snowshoes. Love these snowshoes. They are excellent. Uh, they have never let me down. Lots of expeditions under my belt with the, with the MSR uh, Denali Ascent. I'm going to talk about their specifics. And in a lot of ways, this is kind of an outmoded review, outdated, because it's, the model's been superseded. I think now in 2010, as we come up on 2011, MSR is producing the Evo Ascent. That would be analogous to these Denali's. There's a lot of similarities between the two, so I still think pretty much everything I'm going to say about this model can apply to those Evos as well. Talking points. Oh, yeah. Keeps me organized. I'll probably forget if some stuff. I'm just going to give you my experience, guys. Okay, and that's all it is. Um, I actually think the probably the best reviewer of snowshoes would be somebody who lives in the upper 48, maybe in Canada, Alaska, uh, and lots of places in Europe, Scandinavia, wh where they live in snow all the time. And actually, a snowshoe is not, you know, a recreational thing. It's more of a day day to day living thing where they're using their snowshoes every day just to get their, you know, their stuff done in the snow, especially those folks that live uh, out in the wild. And I'm jealous of those guys, by the way. I think that rocks. Um, but those people would probably be the best ones to talk to because they're using their snowshoes hard every single day. My data point is this, is I'm an outdoor adventurer. 
you guys have seen on camera here in TMP, all season adventurer, right? Just because the snow flies does not mean that I stop my adventuring. In fact, I actually like it a little bit better when the snow flies because the people leave. It's real easy to achieve isolation in the winter time when it's below zero and there's, you know, six feet of powder out in the mountains. Not too many people want to get out in that. We do, Allie the Mountain Dog, my buds and I, my family, uh, you know, on occasion when we're lucky enough to free up schedule, off we go. Always go prepared because those are some serious conditions like I've said in my vids. I'm going to say more of my videos coming up. Um, that's another subject though. On to the talking points. Here we go. Design. Okay, uh, it took me a while to arrive at the MSR snowshoe. Uh, I actually tried a couple other pair uh, or different types before I came to the MSRs. One of them was the uh, Cabela's Alaskan Guide model. Excuse me. I'm not sure who makes it for Cabela's. Might be Tubbs or somebody. But we're talking about design. You need to understand this. Is This is a platform snowshoe. That's just what I call it. I don't know if that nomenclature is right. The ones that I tried before were tubular. That is, they had an aluminum tubular frame, which you see a lot of the Tubbs models have, a lot of other brands, and then they had hypalong decking, a very traditional snowshoe. For my purposes, that sucked. Okay, I'm just going to tell you straight up. I know because I went out on several expeditions with those Alaskan guide snowshoes, which are high quality snowshoes. Don't get me wrong. It's just the design doesn't work for my style of shoeing. And that is, I go in the mountains, okay? I'm not on level terrain. I'm not even on rolling terrain. I'm on the steep stuff. You know, I'm digging in the deep powder, sometimes on icy slopes. I need a snowshoe that gives me very good crampon-like traction. And those Alaskan guides did not work. Even though they had a cleated crampon in the middle of them, they lacked teeth. Instead, they just had the aluminum tubing very problematic on the slope. My buddy and I, back then, I think in 2003, we were testing those, and he had the same pair, and we both remarked how bad we disliked, how much we disliked them, uh, especially when we got on icy slope. It was like sleigh time. We could not get traction. We're really digging our poles in to keep from sliding around. And I came back from that expedition saying, I've got to upgrade. These are not workable for me. I tried another brand, um, borrowed from a buddy. Same design, though, tubular. And I just said, I got to find something else. So I expanded my, my research, went on the internet, looking around, asked around, and this is where I arrived, right here, the MSRs. I was actually kind of bummed because I didn't want to spend this much money back then in 2004. I was like, I spent uh, 160 on these. That's what the cost was back then. I was like, ah, I ordered them off the internet. They're like Hermit's Hut had them at the time. They don't have them anymore, so don't go there. Um, not the, this model. Anyways, uh, I was going, I don't know, man, plastic, you know, snowshoe, is that going to be strong enough? Am I going to break it? Because if you guys have watched in the Nut and Fancy Project, I don't get out just, you know, goofing around with a fanny pack in the woods, snowshoeing for a couple hours. I mean, we're going out on backpack trips pretty much every time. I'm carrying a heavy backpack load, so I'm asking a lot for my snowshoe. I want it to be able to withstand that load. And the load rating on these, by the way... I don't even know, like two and a quarter, maybe 250 pounds. Oh, here it is, 275 pounds. I'm blowing that load rating out of the water. I'm, I'm working about 300 on it, at least especially back then when I was fatter. You know, I was like 25 pounds heavier, plus I'm carrying a 90 pound pack sometimes. You're looking at three, you know, 310, that's a lot to put on plastic snowshoes. Platform style snowshoe, there is no tubular frame, but check this out, this is why one of the many reasons I love the MSR designs. And I'm going to say MSR because this carries over into the new Evos. Even though this is, this is a Denali Ascent, the new Evos share the same design pattern and philosophy. you got a very pliable and tough, I don't even know what the material is, polyurethane decking material. Then you have steel cleats that run the perimeter right here. Here's your crampon teeth. Look at that right there. That's pretty common. Pretty much all snowshoes have that, right? And then you have these molded in traction bars, which prevent, I don't know, going down or going up, depending which way you're going. And then another huge bonus to the Denali's, also the Evo models, and other models in the MSR line, is the additional flotation tails you can add or subtract. Okay, and the nice thing about the Ascent, or the Denali Ascent, is you can add these very long ones, either the eight inch flotation tails, 
and I bought these at the same time because oftentimes I'm in different conditions. Here's the four inch flotation tails. Or you can completely remove them like you saw us do or will see us once I get around to editing the Sub-Zero series of videos. Get this. And that gives a lot of versatility to the shoe. Again, this is not exclusive to the design of the, the Ascent, the Denali Ascent. Okay, and let me get this out of the way. There's actually, or were actually, several models of the Denali. You had the Denali Classics, which did not have this feature right here, since we're talking about design. This is called, by MSR, the Televator. Okay, and when Crockett 20 and myself were out in Sub-Zero, I was trying to remember, it had been a while since I, you know, like a year, you just forget, you gotta get out and bang around these things. Remember, I was like, is that Televator really useful? Yeah, it's really useful, especially in that hike when we're going up some relatively steep terrain. It minimizes calf and um, calf fatigue, I guess. So your heel doesn't have to go down all the way. So as you're going uphill like this, instead of your heel coming all the way back, it hits this raised steel bar and it's less effort and energy you're expending going uphill. And then of course, as you're going downhill, just fold it so it's flush again. The Denali Classics did not have that feature. And actually, um, Crockett 20, that's what he has. And it was just by way of consequence, he arrived at the same snowshoe I did. Okay, he bought it probably even before he knew me. Pretty cool. I was like, hey, those are some Denalis, aren't they? He's like, yeah. But his, the only difference is he's, he doesn't have the Ascent models that have that. So, in a nutshell, that is the difference between the Denali Ascent and the Denali Classics. And just because uh, it doesn't have the Televator, if you're in moderate, maybe slightly rolling terrain, heck, even hilly terrain, I don't think you're really missing out if you don't have this feature, the Televator. If you can get it, get it. Um, but it also adds quite a bit of cost, just the addition of that alone. Um, so if you do find, actually I'm gonna annotate it to end the video, uh, some places where you might be able to go find some Denali, uh, some Denali snowshoes that are still available in 2010. Subject to change, binding system, four strap variety, easy to put on even with gloves. You saw that in Sub-Zero series of vids and I like it, haven't had any problems with it. Except maybe this strap right here, the front toe one, popped out from this side. It just wasn't threaded deep enough. Nothing broke though, haven't broke a strap. It has happened, users report on pretty much all snowshoes. Sooner or later you're gonna break a strap. Um, if it's a really serious hike, you're going deep in the backcountry where the loss of a snowshoe could actually mean something very serious, maybe your life, or you may have to, you know, fashion a, uh, you know, one from natural materials, take a repair kit, highly recommended, right here, and I take one for big trips. This is the MSR repair kit for their snowshoes, at least for this model, around $12, maybe 15 bucks, something like that. Uh, when it counts, I take it. Uh, some people may uh, have experienced issues with these pins, the rotator pins on the crampon. I have had zero, none at all. Again, no rust issues at all. How about that plastic decking? Again, I had a reservation about that when I went to a plastic snowshoe. I was like, I just don't know, especially in colder temperatures. Well, again, let me tell you, in six years of use, and again, this isn't daily use, this is like a couple expeditions per year, zero problems. And I'm talking with big pack loads over a variety of snow and ice conditions. Um, in icy conditions, uh, of which these shoes have seen quite a bit, I was amazed that they, they were so tough. Okay, and my other pair, I lent to a, a, a dude that's even bigger than me. I mean, he, he was probably with his backpack and him uh, to combined, maybe pushing about three and a quarter pounds, 325 pounds on his shoes. I'm not even exaggerating and they work great. Going over uh, ice chunks, icy snow fields, I saw these things flex a lot. Sometimes you just have to span, you know, that is cross a crevice of some sort, and I saw my shoes just flexing like crazy and tough, tough, tough. Now on this one, after six years of use, you can see where that plastic is starting to white out because it's flexed. Hasn't broken. It might one day, but under six years of hiking, like I'm telling you, it ain't broken. Okay, so uh, I'm kind of jumping all over the place on the talking points, sorry. I love them though, they're great. Uh, more importantly, when we're talking about design though, you have to understand that these are serious traction snowshoes. 
okay, serious. And to the fact that, like, um, when I went on Glacier Call, um, you know, if you can get some very, uh, how do I say it, outstanding traction on the slope. Is it as good as crampons? Um, well, it's a different type of traction, really, because you have a platform, you're distributing the weight, and in some cases, that's bad. Crampons would be better. But if this is all you got and you're on steep slopes, this works pretty good. I, I'm talking from experience. You throw them on, you're not going to go anywhere. It's a little bit harder to hike on the side of the slope because you're, you're doing this, you know. You can't really dig it in flat and, and a shelf it into the side of the slope, in my experience. It's much harder to do. You're going to be tilting your foot and then you kind of run into ankle problems. You're basically going to be pointing straight up or straight down for the most comfort, in my mileage. Okay, special features. I probably forgot some stuff. Uh, you can slap those tails on, that's huge. And if you know you're a little person, uh, female, this is probably how you would run it, at least without a backpack. Terrain capabilities, I think I just covered that, right? They're all terrain, baby. Seriously. Great shoes um, for getting around in hilly country where, you know, we do our adventures here. Fit and stability. When I'm talking about fit, I'm talking about will it accept, like I said, the larger boots, the smaller boots? The answer is yes. Stability. Does it shift around while you're doing your hiking? That's bad, right? I would say so. Now, in using my other snowshoes, and again, not extensive experience, fair amount, um, I did see some shifting. I mean, every once in a while, I'd have to readjust the bindings. And my foot had slipped forward. It slipped backward. I don't see that problem very often in the MSRs. I just don't. Um, occasionally I'll have my foot go forward and that's kind of self-evident because when you're hiking you'll hear a click. It'll like click and that means that your boot has slipped forward in the binding and you're clipping this uh, opening right here. All right, so yeah, I've seen that but very seldom. Uh, Crockett 20, my hiking companion and Sub-Zero, no issues at all with it. Uh, bindings pretty much rock. Stability though, overall I'll give it an A. Flotation. Very critical factor. Now, in other words, will it prevent you sinking into deep powder? And I think the powder capes, when I say powder capes, I'm talking about powder capabilities of the MSRs are outstanding. When I say that, what I'm trying to convey to you is that um, energy is everything when you're out in the winter time doing your adventure, especially when you're carrying a lot of weight, backpack, you're going a long distance. And remember that distance in the winter time is going to be about I don't know, I'm going to ballpark at one-tenth of what you can do in the summertime if you're going into deep snow. You're just going to run out of energy. You're going to run out of steam when you're carrying weight. But in the powder, I have found that these are outstanding because they glide easily. They don't. They shed snow relatively well. You know, those large Alaskan guide, excuse me, snowshoes I had previously, I think they're like 30 inches long. They're like massive because that's what I needed for the weight I was going to carry. They picked up a lot of snow, and I'd have snow load on the shoe that I'd have to shake off all the time. Uh, you'll have a little bit of that with the MSRs, but not to quite that extent. And they slice through the powder pretty nice. Uh, again, getting back to you know, the exertion level that you want to minimize whenever you possible. Uh, weight limit I kind of talked about. Rated for 275, they can go higher. By my own experience. And every hike, I take them above 275 with the weight I'm carrying. It's, and I would never buy the shoes and go, oh, it's only good for 275 I need to download some stuff. Sorry. It's like I, I put them in the service, man. Uh, remember the tails that you can add. Pretty much if I'm backpacking, uh, I'm going to be wearing the 8-inch tails. Question will arise. Well, is it less maneuverable when you have that tail sticking out? Yeah, it is. Um, it's physics, dudes. You know that. It's going to be a longer snowshoe. But any snowshoe rated for that weight is going to do one of two things. These are going to come out width-wise, which is not very good because you're going to be banging your shoes together, stepping on them. They're usually going to stay the same width, and you're going to have to expand the length. And subsequent models from MSR, they also, like I said in the intro, still have a flotation adding capability. And that's huge. Um, I, do I run the 4-inch tails? You bet. On day hikes, and I know my, my weight's less, I'll run with the 4-inch tails. Um, and, and guys who have not snowshoed before will say, well, does that allow me to like totally glide on top of the, the powder? No, you're still going to sink in the powder, but you're going to be able to walk in the powder. Without snowshoes, you're going to post hole so badly. Something I've shown in previous videos like snowy fire making, the ones dating all the way back to 2008, that you're going to be pretty much stranded. You can't go anywhere without your snowshoes. It's serious business. Um, 
your snowshoe is going to sink to a certain level like you saw in my vids and then you're going to stabilize and be able to walk. It ain't easy. I mean, you're still working and actually it's a great workout. That's just what I found. Durability. Again, it's excellent. I mean, six years of use, every year they're seeing seasonal use. Again, it's not daily like you would see from a lot of hardcore daily users up in the northern frontier. I ain't seen any breakages. I ain't seen any pins fall out, no strap breakages. Haven't bent the televator, haven't had a, I don't know, any of the rivets pop out. I just ain't seen it. Uh, Crockett 20 reports it on his uh, his teeth, his bottom teeth, which by, by the way are again steel not aluminum. He uh, pounded them on some rocks and they are kind of bent up a little bit here. That will happen though. I try to avoid the rocks whenever I can. Uh, I think my other pair has some scrapes, but overall, very tough. No breakages. The weight, huge issue. Why is that? Well, weight's always a huge issue here in the Nut and Fancy Project, right? I'm always talking about, Allie's got her hair all over that. Um, I'm always talking about weight because it's so critical. SAWC, size and weight constraints. Take for instance, and this is again why I named my adventure so you know exactly what I'm talking about, Glacier Call. Okay, we started out in the green area, the lower elevations. Of course you're not going to have your snowshoes on there, right? But they still need to come along for the ride because you're going to get into the higher elevations and as you saw in Glacier Call, conditions are going to get real serious. Um, so snowshoes went along. We didn't end up using them because the snow was packed enough where we didn't need them. And that's another important point. And I think I've mentioned that in some of my, uh, I don't know, survival skill videos out in the snowy woods. Don't use your snowshoes until you have, you don't have a choice because they do take more exertion to walk with. Uh, I've gone on some packed snow trails before in areas where there's a lot of folks out goofing around and I see them wearing snowshoes on a packed snow trail and I'm carrying mine in my backpack. I'm going to get to the weight thing here in a sec. And I, I was with a friend and we're just laughing like, why are they wearing snowshoes? Maybe they just think they need to wear snowshoes. You don't. It'll become self-evident when you need your snowshoes. You're going to start pulse tolling. You, again, just what I talked about in the powder. You cannot walk without them. Then you go, duh, time to put on the snowshoes. Well, to get to that point, that means you had your snowshoes with you on your pack. And that, again, is another huge plus to the MSR design. They're very compact and relatively lightweight. About three pounds, 10 ounces, uh, if I'm not mistaken, for the Denali, and that's without the flotation tails. For the Denali Classics and the Ascents, about the same. You got a little bit more steel in the Ascents for the Televator. And notice how flat they go. That is something I didn't have with those huge Cabela's Alaskan Guide snowshoes. They were very difficult to bring along because they're so bulky compact and again you can take those tails off store the tails in a separate part of your pack don't get me wrong it's still extra weight you're carrying along but if you're i'll tell you if you're getting out in the the, the wilderness areas in the snow you're going to be carrying a lot of extra weight anyhow if you want to be comfortable and uh, have all your survival gear so that covers packability and weight another a for that value well again back in 2004 when i paid a buck 60 for these plus about $24 for the tails per pair. I was kind of wincing. I was like, ah, that's kind of more money than I wanted to, ex I spent uh, more money than I wanted to spend. I sucked it up and I'm glad I did. Love them. They're outstanding. And I was like, well, just should I buy them used? I actually, back in 2004, was trying to find some used pairs. Couldn't find them. I'm gonna kind of jump into options too. Cause again, the Denali Ascent and the Denali Classic superseded by MSR with other designs. One of them is called the Lightning Flash. Okay, the Lightning Flash is an interesting model. It's a decking model. I mean, it has uh, a poly decking stretched in a frame that has uh, teeth uh, around the perimeter of it, of it. I don't have experience in this model. It looks interesting. You can add tails, although I say um, for the MSR Lightning Flash, they have some really weird flotation tails. Uh, I don't like the design. They're n not compact. They hook in a very unusual way and they look heavy. Okay, that's just a preliminary look -see. Um The model that superseded the Denali, of course, is the Evo. And the Evo Ascent, if you can't find this model, would be my number one recommended. It's basically the same snowshoe you're looking at. A little bit, di few differences. They changed the binding on it. The contour of the decking's changed. 
the concept of the tail is slightly changed. Now they only offer six inch tails, which sucks. They don't have an eight inch and or four inch. They just kind of, you know, struck the middle and said, oh, let's just do a six inch tail. Whatevs, you know, I prefer the difference. I really love that about the Denali Ascents and the Denali Classics, that you have a choice. Hey, I can go a small tail. I can go, you know, no tail on the decking. Put this four inch or the eight inch one on. Awesome, love it. And then they have some very expensive snowshoes. Um, I'll throw a picture up of them. I uh, haven't tried them. I have examined, examined them in person at length, and I'm struck of, one, how expensive they are. They're very expensive. And then, actually, I'm very worried because the aluminum frame on those snowshoes, I'm worried I'm going to bend it. When we're, when we're talking about metal, and we're, I've taken these trekking. I'm talking about that ice and, I've, and occasionally some very stiff terrain. I'm worried that I'm going to bend that frame. And then what do you do? You, you've bent your you know, the frame of your snowshoe out there, then you're kind of jacked up. That's just my initial take. Again, I'd have to get more experience in it. Uh, this plastic decking uh, has withstood a lot of abuse, again. I sound like a broken record. Those are a couple options in the MSR lineup. Uh, I think MSR does a lot of things right. Okay, uh, these snowshoes are one of them. They're just uh, proven in the Nut and Fancy Project with me personally, and apparently with my friends too, Crockett 20, because he ended up the same place I did the MSR Denali's. Um, look in the upper right. In 2010, they are blowing these things out for a very good price. I'd jump all over it uh, if I were you. Uh, and if you can't find them, then the Evo Ascent is another good shoe. However, when you add the Televator in and the slightly upgraded bindings, I think it's around 200 bucks, unless you can find it for a good discount. That sucks. Uh, the regular Evos, and that means just like these, they will not have the Televator are gonna be a lot less. It's amazing how much cost that adds. Okay, but in terms of design, the terrain capabilities, the durability apparently, the weight and compactness, you're gonna be hard pressed to beat the MSRs. There's a lot of snowshoes out there. A lot of different terrains out there, and your terrain may not be my terrain. You know, if you're on flat land, you probably don't need the capabilities of the MSR Denali Ascents. You could probably get away with a tubular frame, decking, snowshoe. You know, a Tubbs model would be just great. Um, but if you're gonna hit some hills and you're gonna hit some ice, some deep powder and weight and compactness is an issue, look up the MSRs, totally worth it. That's the Nut and Fancy review. Thanks guys for the support, totally need it. Ali says hi. We got more adventures awaiting for us there in the snowy mountains. Actually, I can't wait to get out again. Thanks, guys. See ya. Let's get to work. God, these snowshoes rock. <laughs>